Hi everyone and welcome back to the shop. This is the project that we're going to build. It's an end table, but I'm referring to it as a game table because that's what we're going to use it for in my home. It's made out of solid cherry. There's a slight curve in the front and back of the table top. A little bead molding at the bottom of the apron. Continuous wood grain in the drawer front and tapered legs. I designed this table to match the cherry entrance table that I made last year. Let's get started on this table by making the legs. The legs need to be 19 and a quarter. So I'm gonna cross cut this board a little heavy at 19 and three quarters. This board has a pretty straight edge on it, so I can use the table saw instead of the jointer to square up one side. Now that I have a square edge, I'll set the fence at an inch and three quarters a little heavy and rip all four legs. Next I'll run all four legs through the sander taking a little off each side to remove the blade marks. I've set up a stop block and I'll cut the legs to length. This is the board that I'll use for all four aprons. This part here will be for one of the sides. I can fill that nut with epoxy. Here I've got some big scratches on the other side of the board and I don't want them to be on the inside of the drawer. So I'm gonna use this section for the back of the table. Over here, I'll use this for the front. That's where the drawer will be. And the end of the board, I'll get the other side. So the next step is to cut these parts to a rough length. Next, I'll run the boards through the joiner to square up one edge. Now I have a straight edge on one side of each piece. This is going to be the front and the drawer front will be cut out of this piece and then joined back together and that will create the continuous grain. So I'm gonna put this piece to the side for now and the next step is to rip the back and two sides at six and a half inches. This board will be the front of the table and the drawer will be cut out of it and then joined back together. So it's a little extra work. And the way I like to do that is I'll go over to the miter saw, hold the straight edge of the board against the fence, square up one side of the board then flip the board over and take a measurement exactly one half of an inch heavier than what I need. And in this case, that's 19 and a half. First, I'll take a little off this one side to square the board up. and then flip it over and cross cut it at 19 and a half. Next I'll measure over two and a quarter from each side, make a mark and then square across. Back at the table saw I've set the fence at one inch and that's for the rip at the top. Then I'll readjust the fence to four and a quarter and that'll be the rip for the drawer in the center. Then I'll readjust the fence again to an inch and a quarter and that's for the rip at the bottom. When these three pieces are joined back together, that'll make up the six and a half, which is the measurement of the apron. Here are the three pieces, the top, the center piece with the drawer, and the bottom. The next step is to make a cut at the line on both sides, and I want to make sure to cut on this side of the line. Here are the parts all cut to size. 
and you can see how the grain runs through the drawer front on the front of the table. Because of the saw curve, you can see that if we were to just join these parts together, keeping them flush at the ends, we would have too big a reveal on either side of the drawer front. So what I like to do is bring this piece in about a sixteenth of an inch on both ends and that'll make for a tighter fitting drawer. I'm using size 10 biscuits and the slots will protrude a little past the edge on the inside and outside of the frame. I'm okay with that because it's out of sight. Another way to build the frame would be with dowels or dominoes. I've let the glue set up overnight and now I can take it out of the clamps and run it through the sander along with the other parts of the apron so everything is the same thickness. I want the styles to be two inches on either side of the drawer. So I'll pull from the inside of the drawer opening and make a mark at two inches on both sides and that's where I'll make the cut. Now I'll take a measurement of the front apron and it's 19 inches and that's what it's supposed to be so it worked out. If it were 19 and an eighth or 18 and 7 eighths it'd be fine. It's just one of those things you don't have to mention. So now that I've got that measurement I'm going to cut the back apron at the same measurement. I'll start by squaring up one side and then measuring out to 19 inches and cutting it to length. I'm building this table with pocket hole screws. I know some people have a problem with pocket hole screws. I don't, but if you do, you could also build this table with mortise and tenon. And the only thing you'd have to do is add an inch and a half to the length of the aprons, and you'll be able to figure it out from there. I have a mortising machine, but not everybody does, and I felt that this project would be more approachable if I used pocket hole joinery. Now that I have my parts cut to size, the next step is to drill the holes and when I do that, I'm going to stagger the holes so the screws don't meet in the legs. For the aprons at the front and back of the table, I'll measure over from each side and draw a line at an inch and three quarters. For the side aprons, I'll measure over an inch and a quarter. The next step is to cut the taper on the legs. This is the Rockler adjustable tapering jig and it works pretty good. I'll bring the camera closer and show you how I have it set up. There's two adjustment knobs on the jig, one at the top and one at the bottom. I've adjusted the jig so the top of the leg is flush with the edge of the jig and that's where the blade will start to cut. At the bottom, I'm set at an inch and an eighth. That'll make the bottom of the leg an inch and an eighth by an inch and an eighth. It's a good idea to mark an X on the inside of the leg. That's where the apron will be attached. That's your square edge. And when you make your cut, have that first X face the fence. Make your cut. Rotate the leg one time. Make the second cut. And this leg is finished. Now that I have the legs and apron cut to size, I'm almost ready to put them together. Before I put the table together, I'll give the legs and the apron a good sanding. It's easier to sand the parts before the table is assembled. Now that I have the parts sanded, I'll use a small bead molding bit in the router to put a bead molding detail at the bottom of the apron. Now I'm ready to attach the aprons to the legs and I'm going to start with the front of the table. You want to make sure that the bead is facing down and out. And when I attach the aprons, I'm going to use a piece of half inch plywood as a spacer. I'll hold it flush with the back of the leg 
and trace a line. When I attach the apron, I'll hold it at the line, clamp it in position, and attach it with screws. With the apron lightly clamped in position, I'll use the half inch plywood to make sure it's flush with the back of the leg. Once it's in position, I'll tighten the clamp and attach the apron with the pocket hole screws. After attaching the front and back aprons to the legs, I'll then attach the side aprons to the legs that are attached to the front of the table. Next, I'll carefully rotate the assembled front and sides onto the back of the table. Now that I have the apron attached to the legs and the table starting to take shape, I'll need to make drawer runners for the drawer. But before I do that, I'm going to use the biscuit joiner to cut slots on the inside of the apron because I won't be able to get to the inside once I install the drawer runners. And those slots are for wooden clips that will hold the top to the table and allow for expansion and contraction. This is what the drawer runner assembly will look like. I'll need a piece that measures three quarters by four and a quarter, the same depth as the drawer or the drawer opening. A piece at the bottom that's three quarters by an inch and a half that will support the drawer. A piece at the top that's also three quarters by an inch and a half and that will prevent the drawer from tipping forward. I'm using a piece of white oak for this part of the project simply because this board has been hanging around the shop. Poplar or cherry or really any hardwood will work good for making the drawer runners. After ripping all the parts to width, I'll set up a stop block and cut them to length. Before I attach the drawer supports, I'll measure in one inch from each side and drill the pocket holes. I'll build the drawer supports with wood glue and simply tack the parts together with inch and a quarter nails. The nails will hold the parts in position when I clamp them up to create a good strong glue joint. While the glue is drying, I decided to make some half inch by inch and a quarter shims that will help position and make it easier to install the drawer supports. I let the glue set up for about an hour and now I can take these out of the clamps. I'm attaching the inch and a quarter by half inch spacers between the leg and the drawer slide assembly. That will prevent the drawer slide assembly from shifting while I'm driving the screws and it also adds significant strength to the table because that's a pretty big glue joint that's now tied to the apron and the leg. When I'm attaching the drawer slide assembly, you'll notice that there's an extra hole and that's because the hole that I drilled at one inch ends up running into this pocket hole. I'll have the correct measurements in the plans, but I wanted to point that out just in case you saw it. So now that I've got all the parts made, I can start putting everything together. Using a little wood glue, I'll attach the spacers with three quarter inch nails. Now that I have the table put together, I'll get to work on making the top. I'm building the top with two boards and they're just wide enough to get the 20 inches I'll need. I'll start by rough cutting the boards to length. And then I'll use the joiner to put a straight edge on one side of each board. Back at the table saw, I'll cut the boards to a rough width.
When I'm gluing up the boards, I like to go a little heavy on the glue. I'll fill the biscuit slots and then add a good bead on each board. I'll use a chisel or a putty knife to clean up most of the squeeze out and then I'll use a wet rag to clean up the rest. After letting the glue set up overnight, I took the top out of the clamps and used the table saw to cut it to size. I decided to add a slight curve to the front and back of the table and to do that I'll need to make a pattern. To make the pattern, I'm using a piece of half inch MDF and I'll measure from the edge a half of an inch on both sides. Next, I'll tack a piece of quarter by half inch molding in the center and then slightly bend it over to that mark and tack it again. I'm using a little CA glue to make sure the molding doesn't move. You could also use hot glue and that's usually what I use but I couldn't find my hot glue gun. The ball bearing at the bottom of the flush cut bit in the router will follow the molding and create the curve. Now I can use the pattern to trace the curve on the tabletop and I'll use the bandsaw to cut away most of the material. Next, I'll clamp the pattern to the bottom of the tabletop and again use the flush cut bit to create the curve. With the top finished, the next step is to make the drawer. To make the drawer, I'll get started by ripping the drawer front and the drawer sides at 4 and 7 30 seconds. That's just a little smaller than the drawer opening. Next, I'll set up a stop block and cut the drawer sides to length. To make the drawer, I'll get started by cutting a rabbit in the back of the drawer front. I've already cut the rabbit in a test piece to make sure it's a good fit. I'll make the first pass with the board tight against the fence. Then I'll slowly move the board away from the fence, plowing out the rest of the material with each pass. After cutting the rabbit in the drawer fronts, I'll set up to cut a dado in the back of the drawer sides. I've lowered the blade to a quarter inch and set the fence at one inch. I'll make one pass on the test piece and one pass on each side. Next, I'll readjust the fence until I get a good fit with the test piece. Once I've got a good fit, I'll finish cutting the dados in the drawer sides. Cut the groove for the drawer bottom. The height of the blade remains the same at a quarter of an inch. I've set the fence at 3 eighths of an inch and I'll make one pass on the inside of the drawer front, sides, and test piece. Then I'll bump the fence over an eighth of an inch and make another pass on all the parts including the test piece. For the third pass, I'll sneak up on the cut a little at a time with the test piece until I have a good fit. Once I've got a good fit, I'll run all the parts through one last time. To get the measurement for the back of the drawer, I'll measure from the top of the drawer to where the groove starts, and that's just a little bit less than three and a half inches. For the length of the drawer back, I'll measure the inside measurements of the drawer, which is 13 and 11 sixteenths. And I'm going to fold the back of the drawers up together measure the dado which is a half of an inch and I'll add that measurement to the 13 and 11 sixteenths. I'll cut the drawer bottom just a little bit smaller than the drawer back so it slides in easily. I'm building the drawer with screws and I'll measure and mark to drill pilot holes at the drill press. 
and then I'll use a 5 16 brad point bit to countersink the holes. The pilot holes will help guide the drill bit and prevent the screw from going in at an angle when I'm building the drawers. Once the drawer is screwed together, I'll add a bead of glue in the groove at the drawer front and drop the drawer bottom in place. I'll attach the drawer bottom to the drawer back with three inch and a quarter screws. To give the drawer a nice finished look, I'll use the drill press to cut a few walnut plugs to fill the countersink holes in the drawer sides. The drawer stop is attached to the back of the face frame with three quarter inch pin nails and a little wood glue. Once it's tacked in position, I'll add a few squeeze clamps to create a strong glue joint. Well, we're almost at the end of this project and now it's time for all the small details that really make a handmade project special. I'll start with the inside drawer stop. This wooden clip will prevent the drawer from being pulled all the way out of the table and accidentally dropped on the floor. Next, I'll make the wooden clips that will hold the top in place and allow for expansion and contraction. I'll start by ripping three pieces of cherry or any hardwood at one inch, then I'll adjust the fence and resaw the pieces at five eighths. Next I'll set the fence at a quarter inch and lower the blade to a half inch. Using the miter gauge for support, I'll cut a rabbet at each end. Over at the miter saw, I'll cross cut the clips at an inch and three eighths. and then do a little shaping at the bandsaw. I'm making the drawer pole out of babinga. My first rip will be at 3 quarters of an inch. Next I'll set the blade at a 7 degree angle and the fence at 5 eighths of an inch and make another rip. Now I'll lower the blade to a half inch, move the fence in a little bit, and make another rip to create a groove at the bottom of the pole. I'll attach the drawer pole with two screws. Making this simple jig will help me to drill the holes nice and straight. After drilling through the drawer, I like to drill a small pilot hole into the pull. I'll then use a larger bit to tap the pull, making sure not to drill too deep. I'm using a new finish on this project. It's the Vesting LED Hard Wax Oil. This finish hardens immediately with the LED light. I really like this finish and the fact that it dries immediately is a real game changer. I'm going to post another video next week that focuses on this finish, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below.